Good morning, my friends. It's Friday, April 1st. Happy April Fool's Day, and I'm here with you at the rising of the sun. My cat has just eaten, and I have with me this beautiful engraving. Jesus is opening the scriptures, and I noticed today that everyone's heads are sort of turned. They're bowed to him a bit, but also turned to the side. And I just realized it's because they're listening. They're turning their ears to him. Turn your ears and listen to the word of God. Bend your understanding and open your heart. We continue today in the book of Genesis, the second chapter. A baby boy is born to a Levite man and woman, and the baby is beautiful. So the mother decides to put him in what's not called a basket in the Hebrew, but an ark, an ark made out of reeds, hearkening back to Noah's ark. She puts the baby in the ark down the river Nile, and the baby starts to cry his sisters following along, and Pharaoh's daughter finds the little basket, the ark, and opens it, and there's this robust little boy crying out because he's hungry. The brilliant sister says, would you like me to go get a nurse to um, nurse the baby? And um, of course, Pharaoh's daughter says, sure, go ahead. So the daughter brings Moses's mother who nurses him until he's ready to be weaned, and then he's adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. The name Moses, means to bring out, to pull out, as he will, in fact, be was pulled out of the water, but he will also pull a people out of slavery. Moses grows up, and he knows who he is, though. He knows he's Hebrew. He walks amidst the Hebrew slaves and sees an Egyptian beating a Hebrew slave. He looks around, making sure no one's watching, and then he kills the Hebrew. I'm not the Hebrew, the Egyptian. He kills the Egyptian and buries the body in the sand. Thinking he's okay, he goes about and comes back the next day. When he sees two men brawling and stops them, one of them says, are you gonna kill us like you killed the Egyptian? And Moses runs. He runs to the land of Midian near the desert where there is a shepherd whose daughters are tending the sheep and they're at a well at a water hole and other shepherds drive them away and they can't get water for their sheep. So Moses fights the shepherds, protects the women and their sheep and draws out water for them so that the sheep can drink. So they go back and tell their father Jethro what's happened. He invites Moses home and gives Moses his daughter. So Moses has settled himself in the land of Midian. He is obviously very strong quite impulsive, very healthy, willing to murder if needed, able to run. His life seems very chaotic and unsettled, but God is getting him ready for the journey of a lifetime, the journey of an entire people. And so as how strange it is, this, this troubled youth, this one who runs away and who is violent and unpredictable could become such a great leader. We must have patience with our children, our teenagers and young adults as they navigate this time of transition in which we live. They may become great, but they have to learn to navigate a lot more than we did when we were their age. Trust that God will call them into their full purpose as God calls Moses. And a lot of Moses's beginning is very messy, but he will do what he's asked and he will be one of the essential people in history. Just give him time. Let us pray.
Almighty God, we ask that you would bless all young people, all of our teenagers, young adults who are trying to find their way in this crazy world. We ask you to guide them, give them understanding, trust in themselves. Bless this earth, Lord, and blanket it with your peace especially in Ukraine and Ethiopia. Lord, call us to your service today. Bless the sick, the dying, the hungry, those who are in pain. Thank you for the birth of little Gia Elizabeth. Lord, may we do your will today in all that we undertake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.